Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today on the show, we're going to be talking about women, uh, particularly women in business, which are becoming an amazing reckoning force in the entrepreneurial world. We're going to be talking with entrepreneur and uh, founder of the organization Bras, Linda Bambers, on the show. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> amazing lady. We're also going to be talking with uh, another woman in business and author, uh, Christy Geyser, and she's the author of the new book, Juggling Rhinos. Christy Geyser. <laughs> and we got my dear old friend uh, co-hosting tonight, uh, Margot Bush is on the show. Welcome her back. <laughs> we got an amazing show. Don't go anywhere. And guys, stay tuned. You're going to learn something. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. I have my dear friend Margot Bush uh, co-hosting tonight. Margot, how have you been? I've been great. How have you been? <laughs> we were arguing before we were the arguing. camera came back on. <laughs> we, if you just do what I say. <laughs> yeah. That's the <laughs> well, that's problem. That's not going to happen. <laughs> how, how's things uh, on the home front? I know you moved since the I last did. time we spoke. And I, 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 I think you can say I'm a changed woman because driving and I was living far away from the studio and now I live just five minutes away and it's great. Yep. So, well, I, wait a minute. I want to ask a question. What's the thing about your hair going on? It's really you did something really different. No. It. What, what did you do? Well, actually, I got a haircut, and I was I worked out today a couple times, and I bought some clothes, and I was trying to feel young. I think it, I was reaching <laughs> to like hang on to youth and like I'm gonna go trendy, which I never do. So it's well, my it attempt. Good. Yeah, it it's okay. Good. Anyways, um, but I know you moved. I know you told me you would never, ever live in Alabama. And uh, just because you well, didn't want the Alabama license plate, but obviously you've no, converted. No, I mean, well, I just didn't know how beautiful. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I mean, it just, you know, I mean, Alabama is kind of like Oklahoma, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I moved from Oklahoma to come to the water. Yeah. And we live in best an amazing place. Oh my gosh, we yeah. live in the best places. And I, I think that, you know, anytime we're in the car, we just say, don't we live in the most beautiful place? Can we believe we lived anywhere else? Well, I know that um, our guest tonight is really uh, going to resonate with you because I know that um, you were a breast cancer survivor, yeah. or aunt, are a breast cancer survivor. Yeah. And our guest tonight, uh, Linda Bamber, she's an amazing lady, actually, um, very successful entrepreneur, but also founder of an organization uh, called Bras, which I'm dying to find out more about. So let's welcome our guest tonight, uh, Linda Bamber. Thank you. So glad Thanks. I have you. Thank you very much. It's great seeing you. Thanks Thank for you. coming, Linda. Now, uh, I know that we've, it's been a long time since we've seen yes. each other. Yep. I know last time we ran into each other, it was in the Midwest. Spring Hill. And that yes. had to have been a couple years ago? Yes. How have you been? Uh, just fine. That's just exactly when I was starting my business. So yes, and great. so uh, that's a great point because now this thing is just going a mile a minute. It's it's really taken off. It's enlarging. But I yes. didn't really realize that when we spoke last time, you were just starting it. Mm -hmm. yes. So you're doing something right. Obviously, most people are not doing. You know, the first three to five years is really a testing ground. But you guys just kind of uh, took. We're right still off. in that three to five years, and we're right. we're changing. We're growing. Yeah, that's important. Now I want to talk a little bit about uh, about the organization. Uh, I know you're the founder mm -hmm. of, of Bras. Uh, can you tell us first of all what does Bras stand for? Bras is an acronym for Breast Research Awareness and Support, and I actually founded it because both my mother and sister were diagnosed with breast cancer six months apart. Oh. So I had to figure. They're survivors, but I had to figure out what I could do to protect myself. And in the end, I've developed a business that is something that can protect lots and lots of women. And that's something that we're not doing today. So it fills a niche. It fills an empty spot because we have no methods of teaching women who can teach them, their granddaughters or their, their daughters. You know, women can teach women if we just know some information to protect ourselves. Yeah, and the little bit that I've researched, uh, I know that you guys are really into being more proactive as far as let's take some steps before there's an actual problem yes. <laughs> instead of once there's a problem, here's what we need to do. That's right. And that's how our system is today. You know, breast cancer has not improved in the last 25 years. This is October, so it's a great time to mention the National Breast Cancer Awareness Month is, is kicked off. And we have pink and pink ribbons everywhere. Yeah. But our statistics haven't improved. 
And it seems to me that everything that we've been doing for this 25-year period has been aimed at looking after the fact. Nothing has been done to teach women to protect themselves. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, what's really interesting that struck me about this, because I'm actually familiar a little bit with the Susan B. Coleman Foundation. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was telling you backstage, yep. my father yep. uh, re a few years ago passed away of cancer. And when he passed away, I, I uh, wanted to make a donation, and I called uh, a certain very large organization and uh, asked to make a donation and they said well um, you're gonna have to call back and I was like okay so I actually called back again and I said I'm trying to make a donation and they said well call back and I said well I've already called back I'm trying to give you money and they said well give us your number we'll have somebody call you oh, wow. That's and they different. never called so uh, I actually figured you know cancer is ultimately cancer my father didn't have breast cancer but I called the Susan B. Coleman Foundation, and they were right there on it. And I did the walk. Uh, they had a, about a 70,000-person walk in St. Louis. It is amazing. It's, it's, it's amazing. huge. Yes, it is. It's, but what I really, uh, what's different about your, uh, th you've kind of franchised it. So yes, I have. So if a survivor or just a woman is inspired about the work that you guys are doing, they can actually get involved. Tell us a little bit about what was behind the thinking of going that model. Basically, um, I started giving speeches all over the Midwest, and small ones, big ones, you know, and I was in El Dorado, Kansas, a very small community, and 10 women came to listen to me talk about breast health. And afterwards, about four of them asked me how they could become involved in my business. And so I decided that I should look into a franchise model. And so now it's available across the U.S., really, for women who would like to step up and almost be hands-on you know, for lack of a better word, and be teaching and also providing thermography, which is something I haven't mentioned yet. But we, that's a huge part of our business is providing a safe, pain-free, radiation-free screening for breast health. And I love this thermography because it can teach us and show us what we can change. So uh, it provides such a great tool, different from a mammogram, it's considered an adjunct. But I've screened a nine-year-old girl who had a breast lump. I've screened men. Uh, I screened right? obviously tons of women, and it just provides a much, much better source of protection and showing women so that a picture's worth a thousand words, and that's what a thermogram is. It's digital infrared thermal imaging, and so basically they're using technology that's been updated by the armed forces, mm -hmm. and it's the heat-seeking smart bombs and the thermal oh, wow. imaging is basically what we're doing. So we're looking with the imaging, just a simple picture system, to see if your breast has a fever. And wow. wouldn't you like to know ahead of time if your breast has a fever? So years ahead yeah, sometimes. From what I've read is once they, if somebody, even as if they're regular with the mammogram, by the time they might find a lump, that's already been growing for quite a yes. long time. Is that right? Yes. So this yeah. really shows that there's a heat, there's a section there that has uh, above average temperature. Yes. And that this could be a problem right. before it's actually a problem. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. a lot more proactive than dealing with you it. You said the, the word fact. proactive and that's really what women need because we're we're starting to become aware of our mammograms do have some problems. They are the gold standard and that's what our doctors have to use but there's other choices. Women just need to know about those choices and right. take advantage of them. I want to hear more about the choices because you know years ago it seemed like you would meet a person here and there that was a breast cancer survivor. Now I, I probably know a couple handfuls mm -hmm. just personally and um, every time I mention it, in fact, when I was mentioning that you were coming on the show, my mom's a breast cancer survivor, this person, this person, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't believe how prevalent it yes. was. So yeah. I want to talk about uh, a little bit more about what people can do and how they can get involved when we come back. Uh, let's take a short break. We'll be right back with Linda Bamber. Don't go anywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. I'm here with Linda Bamber. We've been discussing uh, thermography and the difference between uh, that and like a traditional mammogram. And we were talking about how uh, it actually goes in, takes kind of like a temperature. Yes. Uh, and it's more preventative and a little bit more cutting edge in my, that's just my synopsis of it. But um, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about what other things people can do to be a little bit more proactive. Uh, and you mentioned men too, that obviously is a growing problem. Well, that's basically what the Brawls franchises teach. This is information that is really, um, I've written a book on it, basically, and I'm using it for my secret sauce for my franchises, basically. But it is so important to realize that uh, we have estrogen problems, and the estrogen estrogen is just not from our body. We've been taught that if we have our period that, you know, too young as a child or older, that that's a huge problem when it isn't. 
-hmm. For example, we get more estrogen from drinking out of a plastic cup that's been heated over a time period. So we have many, many more problems with estrogen because of our pesticides and our plastics in our society. Wow. And then a new thing that's coming up that also causes estrogen is our underwire bras are causing a problem with that too. And sometimes that's in the concept of being maybe a myth, but there's more and more information out there. The research was done in Kansas City by Charles Graham, and he's basically saying that EMFs or uh, electromagnetic frequencies from our cell phones and everything around us actually change our estrogen and testosterone. And so if we have an underwire bra, we just have an antenna right. that pulls all of these frequencies right into our body and changes our estrogen. Wow. Another huge problem is uh, aspartame products that have it in it. So mm. I've actually captured a really good picture of a gal who thinks I'm going to make her famous because it's such an amazing picture. Uh, the pictures are uh, colored and she is just bright red and it doesn't take anybody with any training to know that that picture is incorrect. And when she went off of her diet pop uh, drinking, uh, her picture improved immediately. So we can show, you know, using that old adage of pictures <coughs> worth a thousand words, we can show that with a thermogram and that's all she needed to see that picture and she's never had a drink of diet pop uh, since I've then. had a little bit of a issue with cutting the Diet Coke. I, I like Diet Coke. Gotta get there. And I know what you're saying is true. It's basically mm -hmm. almost like a preserve, like formaldehyde. There you go. And uh, I know how bad it is. And actually, I've just hired a new trainer that is really on me mm -hmm. about this stuff. And, uh, you know, I hear it's bad for your body, but you don't really understand all the effects. And today, actually, he was going over more of the way that your body reacts to that stuff. And Really, once I heard what that whole side of it, yes. I was like, okay, I'm done with it. And we have all that information in our bras franchises and more. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We're showing women. Well, that's what I really appreciate about the organization is instead of just providing uh, a service, you're really into the education. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I think for long-term change, you can, give, you can fix something, you can give people, you know, put on a workshop or whatever. But for really long-term change, I think that you can't tell them they should do this, but they really have to get all the information and then the decision has to be there. Yes. Uh, and we have, a, you know, offices or uh, clinics where they can walk into, they can see this information. Uh, we have supplements specific for breast health. Uh, one of my favorite supplements is an iodine cream and that's really a necessity for women's breast health. Not many women realize that their uh, thyroid, um, when it g starts to have problems and low functioning, that it's actually messing up the iodine balance in their uh. breast. And so I show some specific exercises and put an iodine cream on, and a lot of times uh, breast lumps have gone away just with that small amount of work. Fibrocystic always goes away, and women are, are suffering for years with fibrocystic breast problems. Hmm. And simple exercises and iodine can help that. Well, I know that uh, you started it just a couple of years ago. The thing's already really taken off. And uh, I know that um, you've done this franchise model, and it's been very respondent. Uh, is it all, I'm curious, is it mostly women that are uh, the, the franchise yes, owners? Yes, I have or? several women, but I also have a, a, a pastor, a man. Oh, wow. And he starts his speeches saying, you know, now it's unusual for a, a man, a pastor like me, to be uh, owning a, a franchise. Somebody called Braz. Yeah, I didn't think Braz. that. But I think it works very well, and he's very passionate about it, what he does. He loves thermography, and of course he has women who do the therm thermography for him. So, What do you see as far as the future of, of breast cancer? I know it's a huge problem not only in women but in men but where do you think that we're going are we going in the right direction no that's why I started bras we if we don't change anything if we don't get a, a lot more information out there it's going to go just the same it has been and we still have one in eight women who are coming bre have breast cancer problems and those statistics haven't improved and they're getting younger Yes, they're very, getting a lot younger, 25-year-old yes. girls. Well, I'm hearing about diagnosis. people all the time that are 35, it's 40 sad. years old. I just went back home recently from the old neighborhood, and my buddy's sister, she was probably 38. I said, Where, where's Martha? Oh, she passed away, breast cancer. Oh, yes. I mean, just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was yeah. diagnosed when I was 40, and uh, even then they said that it was getting so uh, rampant in 25, 26, 27-year-old girls. And so, and so that yeah. means that what we've been doing is not right. So we no, have to have a change. And in fact, have my, have my physician, he said that, I mean, he was adamant. He called me every single day and said, it's time to go to surgery. Yeah. It's time to go to surgery. Well, Linda, how can people get involved? I know people are going to, our viewers out there, they're going to want to get involved. Uh, what can we do to get involved? My uh, website is www.breastresearchawareness.com or Bras Thermography 
or bras franchises. I have three different websites. Any of those will come to. up. There you go. You well, listen, those. we really appreciate you coming on the show. I know we have a mutual friend, yes. uh, Libby. Yes. And so say hi to her when I you will see do her that. again. Uh, thank you so much thank for you. coming. Come back anytime. Uh, Linda Bamber, everybody. We'll be right back with uh, author Christy Geyser. Stay with us. Thank you. Welcome back. Our next guest is uh, also a very successful woman entrepreneur and also the author of a new book, Juggling Rhinos. Give a warm welcome to uh, Christy Geyser. Do it again. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank, thank you for having me. And now, Christy, I have to say that uh, with the show, we, we get a lot of different books. And Juggling Rhinos, first of all, tell us a little bit about the name Juggling Rhinos. Juggling Rhinos. Um, as the book entails, it's a story of my husband and I and our daughter. So it's a it's a real so story. It is our, yes, it is our story. It, it um, really happened because it, there was points in the book I, I have to say that I was actually saying, is this true? Is, could this be real? But I know that it's all uh, verifiable. In fact, we also have a mutual friend, uh, Adam, who's been uh, very involved with the book and um, unbelievable read. In fact, I almost thought the content which we're going to discuss would be a little too heavy for me because I cry like a baby. Really easy. I mean, movies, I'm, but, uh, I'm damaged goods, I guess. But uh, when I was reading it, it was really inspiring. It was really upbeat and positive. And that morning when I went to work, I, I uh, went with a little more skip in my step. And what I like about it, too, it wasn't War and Peace. But it's, uh, you know, a few hours, you're through it. It's very easy read, so well done. Yes, thank you. It was great. Thank you. So juggling rhinos, I presume it's juggling big stuff. Yes. And the subline, yeah. actually, I have the book here. Uh, there it is, juggling rhinos. We have the uh, family on the back here. Uh, the subline is finding hope and strength when life's problems are charging uh, right at you. Yes. And certainly, you guys had some real stuff uh, charging at you. Tell us a little bit about uh, Abby. I know you're you're you have uh, three. I have six uh, kids. Okay, six, yes. way off base there. I should know six kids. I have three girls and, and I have three boys. Okay, that's where I'm confused. There was a three in there. Um, uh, but uh, I know you just uh, had the, the. You have a new one. He's a month old. Yes. A month old, yes. and you're already doing the show. In, in fact, I have to tell on you real quick. So I was talking to you. Uh, I was talking to her about. Uh, uh, five or six weeks ago, and we were talking about the show when we were going to do some things together. And she says, "Well, right after the show, I'll be ready to go. Like, um, in, in like a couple days after the hospital, I'll be ready." And I'm like, "A couple days from the hospital? I don't think so. Are you sure?" Yeah, I'm, but I get it now. Six one, you kind of got the routine down. Yeah. <laughs> you need a day's rest, and you're good to go. Plus, I have an amazing helper. So yes, yeah. Skip, yes, uh, your yes. husband. But tell us a little bit about Abby. Now, in the line of girls, she's the... She's the second oldest. The second oldest. Yes. And she was diagnosed uh, with cancer... At four months old. Four she months old. She was four months old. Um, it was in 2002. She uh, was diagnosed with um, retinoblastoma, which was tumors in her eyes. And we took her immediately up to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital up in Memphis, where she was treated for um, six months with chemotherapy. Did amazingly well. And... Um, found out again in 2008 that she um, had a osteosarcoma, which was a tumor in her femur. Completely different. Completely different, type yes. Type cancer. Yes, was not a metastasis. Um, but she was treated again. They removed her femur. Um, she has an internal prosthesis, so she still has her leg. She still has both of her eyes, and it's just amazing what they have done. And Well, and saving their vision at that young, exactly. you said four months old. Right. Um, St. Jude's is just an amazing that they are. Uh, organization. Yes. And I know, Margo, uh, we, our yeah. first guest was talking about, we were talking about breast cancer. You're uh, yeah, a I breast cancer have, survivor. Uh, my oldest son, he was uh, diagnosed with a Wilms tumor at four. And uh, at that time, uh, he had a 98% chance that he would not live. And now, because of their research, and this is the truth, 3% of, it's just 3% that maybe children won't live. That whole, uh, be, just because of their research. So it's no more, most of the children are going home and they're doing just fine with them. Well, and as you know, when you get that kind of news, uh, I have a five-year-old uh, son that just turned five. And I, I actually, many people are like, I know what you're going through. I'm sure 
but really we don't. And I was actually trying to put myself into that situation. And it's, it's just, it's unfathomable yes. right. to me. But you're, you, you know, you hear of, hey, your daughter, we have a problem with her vision, she has cancer. And you know, at such a young age, or you hear like your son, we have a 97, 98 fatality rate here. So we yeah. want you to be aware. I mean, how do you deal with that? Faith. Faith. <laughs> really, it was. It was amazing, the grace that we, we, we felt almost immediately. Obviously, it wasn't immediately. We, it was quite the blow when we first had found out. But really, it was really our faith that brought us through. Well, and you know, reading the book, uh, and, and I know that uh, I was anticipating, like, I, I knew that I wanted to read. I said, this is going to be amazing content. And uh, I know Adam uh, is a mutual friend that also helped with the book, kind of uh, go through yes. it. And, and I, I know he does really good work. Yes, and I he thought, does. you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading it. But the content, I was afraid that it's so heavy. I just, I'm going to almost have to say like, okay, this is the month I'm going to tackle that thing. But when I read it, it's really not talking about the dark periods so much of what you guys went through in that dark place. But really, I took away from the book, the message was really... Uh, you know, maintaining your optimism and no matter what, you got to carve out that family time. You still have to maintain joy. You still have to be positive. And when I was reading it, I actually found myself laughing uh, out loud at some things because there was parts, it was almost like the movie The Out of Towners with Jack Lemmon, where like everything possible that could be going wrong is going wrong. And you're at the, you're at St. Jude's and he's out there financially trying to take on all those things. And then he's driving, trying to get to you. And it not only has a flat tire, but three flat tires at the same time, then he can't right. get the tire up. I'm like, is this, could this be happening? But really, life storms, everything that could have tested you really came at you guys. And uh, the way you came out the other side, so positive. Every time we've talked, you've always been so upbeat. Uh, you certainly must have a very strong faith, and you guys are an amazing example for people that are uh, uh, going through something like this. And, of course, we have to keep in mind, I'm sure people have just gotten this news. The phone call you got, right? Uh, people are getting that every day. Yes, um, that's tell very us tough. real quick a little bit about um, the book and how can people uh, get the copy of the book. Um, the book is available either on my website at jugglingrhinos.com or it also is available at the publisher's website at indigoriverpublishing.com. Indigoriverpublishing.com or jugglingrhinos.com. Juggling rhinos uh, guys, you have to check out this book. It's an amazing read. It's inspiring. It's going to leave you inspired. And uh, certainly, Christy, we, we, we appreciate you being Thank on the you. show. Thanks. You've been an amazing guest. And guys, that's all the time we have tonight. Uh, don't forget to get involved in your local community and be forgiving of others. Good night, everybody. Thank you.